gawin ko? First of all, you really need to rest. Kailan nagsimula ang pananakit ng ulo at pag-ubo mo? Kahapon pa po ng ubaga, Dok. Nag-check mo na ba temperature mo? Care is just a call away. With MaxiCare's 24-7 teleconsult service, every MaxiCare principal member and their dependent gets free expert medical consultation from reliable MaxiCare partner doctors anywhere at any time. Sa MaxiCare 24-7 teleconsult service, ang alaga parang nariyan lang. MaxiCare. Pag naaksidente, sagot ka ng e-ready ang first prepaid emergency health card from MaxiCare. Sagot ang sakit ng katawan, sagot din ang sakit sa bulsa. Pag emergency, sagot ka ng MaxiCare e-ready. Pagbiglang nagkasakit, sagot ka ng e-ready. Ang first prepaid emergency health card from MaxiCare. Sagot ang anumang sakit, sagot din ang sakit sa bulsa. Pag-emergency, sagot ka ng MaxiCare e-ready. Si Mama, unlimited ang pagmamahal. Kaya unlimited din ang pasasalamat ko sa kanya. It's time to give back with MaxiCare Prima Gold, the affordable prepaid health card for senior citizens.
kanina pa masama yung pakiramdam ko. <coughs> Obo. Sipon. Masakit ang ulo. Ilagnat na rin yata ako. Sa tingin ko, hindi ko na kaya pumunta sa ospital. Dok, anong gagawin ko? First of all, you really need to rest. Kailan nagsimula pa ng nakit ng ulo at pag-ubo mo? Kapon, papunta ko pa agad, Dok. Nag-check mo na ba temperature mo? Care is just a call away. With MaxiCare's 24-7 teleconsult service, every MaxiCare principal member and their dependent gets free expert medical consultation from reliable MaxiCare partner doctors anywhere at any time. Sa MaxiCare 24-7 teleconsult service, ang alaga parang nariyan lang. MaxiCare. Pag naaksidente, sagot ka ng e-ready. Ang first prepaid emergency health card from MaxiCare. Sagot ang sakit ng katawan, sagot din ang sakit sa bulsa. Pag emergency, sagot ka ng MaxiCare e-ready. Pagbiglang nagkasakit, sagot ka ng e-ready. Ang first prepaid emergency health card from MaxiCare. Sagot ang anumang sakit, sagot din ang sakit sa bulsa. Pag-emergency, sagot ka ng MaxiCare e-ready. Si Mama, unlimited ang pagmamahal. Kaya unlimited din ang pasasalamat ko sa kanya. It's time to give back with MaxiCare Primo Gold, the affordable prepaid health card for senior citizens.
Ka Hindi na pa masama yung pakiramdam ko. <coughs> Obo. Sipon. Masakit ang ulo. Ay, laglat na rin yata ako. Sa tingin ko, hindi ko na kaya pumunta sa ospital. Dok! Ano ang gagawin ko? First of all, you really need to rest. Kaya nang nagsimula ang pananakit ng ulo at pag-ubo mo. Kapon, papunang umaga, Dok. Na-check mo na ba temperature mo? Care is just a call away. With MaxiCare's 24-7 teleconsult service, every MaxiCare principal member and their dependent gets free expert medical consultation from reliable MaxiCare partner doctors anywhere at any time. Sa MaxiCare 24-7 teleconsult service, ang alaga parang nariyan lang. MaxiCare. Good morning, MaxiCare members. Welcome to MaxiLife, a MaxiCare well-being webinar series focusing on the five stages of coping with present times with Ms. Saps Utam. This is brought to you by MaxiCare as part of their mission to help you live your best life. I'm Patricia bermudez Hezon, and I'm happy to be learning with you and hosting parts of this event. I'm looking forward to hearing from Dr. Art Libao of MaxiCare, who will kick off this program, immediately followed by the talk of our expert, Ms. Saps Utam. And after her discussion, we will be joined by Dr. Joyce Maglake, who will facilitate the Q&A with Ms. Saps. So make sure you stay till the end, because I'm certain that this talk will help all of us tremendously. We already would like to express our heartfelt gratitude for your presence in today's event. And our hearts are full already with the great turnout that we're having here on Zoom. And we still have just a few more minutes before we hear from Dr. Art. And we humbly ask for your cooperation because we want to ensure that we have a systematic flow, meaningful interaction, and the best overall webinar experience that we can provide. So for this, we humbly ask for your cooperation in following this event's guidelines. Now, to get and make the most of this webinar experience, dedicate an undivided attention to the speaker and ensure that you are physically in an area without potential interruptions and noise. Avoid multitasking and address any internet connection issues before the webinar officially begins. Now, let's also observe Zoom etiquette and best practices. At this moment, participants video and audio settings are disabled but just in case we're not able to do this due to some unknown technical errors please check your camera now if it is turned off and turn it off now and your mic it should be muted we do however encourage all of you to rename yourselves and put your first and last name do that right now now, this webinar may also provide subtitles or closed captioning for your convenience in recalling important highlights. Kindly check your settings now and set the subtitle size to the size that you're comfortable with. The setting can be found when you hover your mouse at the bottom, right there, at the bottom of this Zoom room. You can try that out right now. All right, you can also adjust the size of the window of the panelists, that's me for now, and the window of the document that's being shared, that's the other side. Now, in between my window and that window that you're seeing right now, you can actually see a border or a line in between, and you can actually click and toggle on that, move it side to side, so you can adjust the size of the screen to your liking. Go ahead and adjust it. Now, engage with the speaker and feel free to ask questions during the Q&A portion via the Q&A box. You may send your comments, questions, and other concerns through the Q&A box while the presentation proper is ongoing, but note that your questions will only be answered during the Q&A portion. Do not use the chat box, if in case it wasn't disabled, but as you can see, it is disabled, and maximize the use of the Q&A box in this room. Note that questions may be answered through the Q&A box by your staff or answered live by the speaker. So again, make sure you rename yourself so you can be properly addressed. If your questions are not answered, you may send an email to maxicarewebinar at maxicare.com.ph and our speaker will respond to your questions after the event. 
unruly and disruptive behavior will not be tolerated as this may affect other participants' webinar experience. Now, if you like today's discussion, you can share your thoughts after the event through your social media accounts using the hashtags MaxiCare MaxiLife Webinar and Live Your Best Life. And don't forget to tag MaxiCare using the social media handles that they have. On Facebook, it's MaxiCare Healthcare Corp. On Instagram, it's MaxiCare Healthcare. And they also have a health and wellness Instagram account, MaxiCare Health and Wellness. Now we will send out a survey form after the event and we will be giving away raffle prizes to those who complete the survey and we'll be raffling off and giving out some special prizes to those that we end up uh, randomly selecting. Now we are so excited to get going everyone, but before we officially start, we have a quick series of poll questions for you and all you need to do is click on the answer that best suits you as fast as you can. Dapat ready kayo, ha? as fast as you can. Here is my first poll question. Dapat totoong sagot lang. On a scale of 1 to 10, kaano ka ka-stress ngayon? Sige nga. On a scale of 1 to 10, kaano ka ka-stress ngayon? Alright, let's see the result. And let's see how everyone, about 25%. Yan ang pinakamataas na nasa 8 on a scale of 1 to 10. Tutulungan namin kayo. O ito, mabilisan lang ha. Isang mabilisang tanong. Please sagutin. Naligo ka na ba? Hmm. Naligo ka na ba? Titignan ko yung mga result. No judgment here. Hindi ko naman kayo maamoy. Pero, naligo ka na ba? Tignan nga natin. Aba, yes, ako pa. Pero, right behind it is later na after this important <laughs> Zoominar. Gusto ko yan. No, ito. Gusto ko rin. Tanong ko sa inyo. If you're a Netflix character right now, sino ka? Ikaw ba si Pablo Escobar of Narcos? Si Eleven of Stranger Things? Si Klaus ng Umbrella Academy? Or si Captain Ree ng Crash Landing on You? Tignan ko kung sino dito ang mahilig talaga manood. Sino ka? And survey says, sino nakaka-relate? Ang mga tao ba, mga crash landing on you viewers talaga kayo. Whopping 48% na Chloe watchers. Okay. Last, ikaw ba ngayon ay, sabihin ng totoo, single, strong, and independent, or taken and happy, hmm? taken and happy, or kakabreak lang with jowa pero babangon muli, kumanda kayo, or gutom. Alin kayo dyan? Ikaw ba ay, gusto ko makita yung sagot. Pwede ba sagutin nyo na ngayon? At the poll question, aba, bakit pumunta tayo dun sa scale of 1 to 10? Nakaka-stress ngayon. Talagang binitin lang namin kayo, no? Pero nakikita ko talaga yung result na I think majority of the people are taken and happy just like me. Nako, nakakatuwa naman. We're happy that you are joining us, pero madami din guto. Makaya, bubusugin namin kayo with information. It looks like we're all raring to go. Once again, welcome to Maxi Life, MaxiCare Wellbeing Webinar Series. <laughs> This event is made possible by MaxiCare. This session, entitled The Five Stages of Coping with Present Times with Saps Utam, will help you examine yourself to make more sense of these trying times and help you find tools and mechanisms to manage, survive, and overcome the difficult circumstances that we are all faced with today. MaxiCare was really intentional in putting this talk together because they really want all of you to live your best life. Now, to give us his opening remarks, here is Senior Assistant, Vice President, Provider Relations Department, and Deputy Medical Director of MaxiCare, Dr. Art Libao. I'm very excited to be hearing from Dr. Art Libao, so let's all welcome him. Hi, Dr. Art, I hope you're doing well and you're as excited as I am to start. So here he is. Dr. Libao. Thank you, Patricia. Good morning, everyone. Welcome to the MaxiLife webinar series. Our webinar today is entitled The Five Stages of Coping with the Present Times. With the approval of the implementing rules and regulations of the mental health law in January of 2019, MaxiCare became the first HMO to offer a specialized outpatient program for mental health related conditions. By February of 2019, our primary care centers and our 24 by 7 teleconsult offered mental health support to our members. Patients didn't mind braving the pre-COVID ESA traffic 
just to secure the appropriate consultations. By mid-February of 2020, everyone was focused on the physical aspect of the coronavirus. Signs and symptoms were extensively discussed. By April, health authorities saw more and more mental and emotional effects of the pandemic. The forced quarantine, the inability to engage in recreational activities, and the sudden and unplanned work from home arrangements, coupled with the fear of contracting the disease, the uncertainty, and the sense of helplessness gave rise to what I call bad times, B-A-D. B for burnout, A for anxiety, and D for depression. Now, more than ever, we need to provide the necessary awareness and the needed interventions to help support the susceptible population. Knowing how to cope will definitely make the big difference. Hopefully, what you learn today, you can apply to yourselves or share with others. Be mindful of yourselves. Be mindful of others as well. Massacre's mission is to help you live your best life. Be mentally resilient, be mentally resilient and strong. Stay safe, everyone. Thank you and have a great day. Back to you, Patricia. Wow, what a wonderful message. Thanks so much to you, Dr. Art. Wow, MaxiCare is really going above and beyond for its members and all to deliver on its promise. And this is really a part of who MaxiCare is and what they do for their valued members. Thank you so much once again. Now, time to get to the meat of things. As I mentioned earlier, I encourage all of you to follow our guidelines so you can fully enjoy this experience for this Zoominar. Now, ladies and gentlemen, our speaker for today is an inner child therapist, mental, emotional, spiritual therapist, and integrative nutritionist. She is also well-versed in the field of hypnotherapy and metaphor therapy. She completed her training in Hong Kong and received her license from the Integrated Clinical Hypnotherapy Foundation. She has also earned certificates from the International Medical Dental Hypnotherapy Association, the International Association of Counselors and Therapists, the EKAA or International Clinical Hypnotherapy, and the Institution for Integrated Nutrition. She also completed further studies in applied psychology and integrated approaches. Ladies and gentlemen, I'm very honored to be welcoming to this webinar, Ms. Saps Utam. Hello, everyone. Welcome to today's webinar. So now we say Zoominar, right? So first of all, thank you for being here on this morning. Thank you for being here this morning. And, you know, thank you also to MaxiCare for putting on this um, webinar, series of webinar for us to learn from. We're all going to be talking about mental health because you know, during these trying times, um, we need some sort of guidance. We need to be holding the space for you guys because, you know, for the longest time, we never really did focus on our mental health. But now we realize that there are a lot of emotions that's coming up. There's a lot of feelings. There's a lot of anxiety. And we're here to uh, make sense of it all. So for today's topic, the five stages of cope with, uh, coping with um, times, with these times, I chose today um, to focus on the Kubler-Ross method, which is grief. Now, before we start with the presentation, grief is not losing a person per se, although it is, but losing our identity, losing our freedom losing a job, you know, going out, engaging with the world, that's part of grief. And so I thought it was just befitting that we talk about the Kubler-Ross method. And I'm going to walk you through the five stages. And I love it when it's very interactive because I want you to feel where you are right now. So there's no steadfast rule where you need to be and where you're at, but this serves as a map as to where you're going to go next. And maybe if you're not there yet, how you're supposed to deal with it. But again, there's no right and there's no wrong. More, more importantly, 
I want you to understand that we're all emotional beings going through all of this together. And for someone like me, who's a therapist, I did go through a little bit of anxiety when this happened. And um, I will explain in detail what anxiety means so you can understand what's happening to you. Because um, we need a map, we need a roadmap so that we know where to go, what's going to happen. Because this is something that we haven't really done. We haven't really, we're not in touch with our emotions. We're not in touch with all these, these things that's coming up. So let us begin. So the first slide is denial. So you remember that day, March, when we got that message, we heard it in the news. Wow, we're going to go into lockdown. And denial is trying to avoid the inevitable. This stage is typically the first stage. It's a short term, it's a defense for a person. You know, the emotions that come up during denial are the following confusion, shock, fear, feeling stuck. But the one main feeling I would say is anxiety. And what is anxiety? Anxiety is fearing the future because we don't know what's going to happen. So during that, that time in March, when we suddenly got the text or we got information that we're going to go into lockdown, we were like, why? Oh my God. What do you mean? This isn't happening. This can't happen. And we're asking all these questions. What's going to happen tomorrow? Am I still going to go to work? What's going to happen if I, if I go out, if I step out of the house? You know, all these news. If I step out, COVID bajo. Paano na? If I go to the grocery, what if somebody coughs? What's going to happen? All these questions were coming at us in real time. And so a lot of us were confused. So that's typically the first stage. It's the quickest stage. We go through denial. I can't believe this is going to happen. How long? You know, all these questions come up. And I want you to understand that there's no right or there's no wrong questions. Whatever we're feeling is valid. All the questions that's coming up, all our fears, our anxiety, it's all valid. But we, as human beings, we don't talk about it. We suppress our emotions. Because we think that we have to go to work. Next, what's next? Next, bahala na si emotions. We can deal with our emotions later on. And then we don't go back and we don't deal with it. And so that creates a little bit of feeling of stuck, which leads us to the second one, the second slide being anger. Now. Second slide, please. Anger. Now, anger at this stage, as soon as the person realizes that the denial cannot continue, it can be very difficult to care for someone in this stage due to emotions like rage and be angry at themselves and to others. How is this happening to us? This isn't fair. So frustration, irritation, outpouring of bottled up emotion, Galit tayo sa government, galit tayo sa kahit kanino na lang, galit na lang tayo. But here's the thing, most people, they don't get angry outward. It's always inward. And when we get angry inward, when we don't say what we really feel, that creates a problem for us. Now. I'm going to say two things to you. When you're in a state of anger, please don't hurt yourself and don't hurt another person. Don't hurt yourself. Don't hurt another person, even through your words and through your actions. 
we need to sit down with our anger and ask like where is this coming from bakit tayo nagagalit you know alam i know life is unfair this is not happening parang sinabi lockdown was a few weeks biglang how many weeks na and if we really really understand where anger is coming from we go deep 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 down that's immense sadness it's immense sadness because we're frustrated we can't do anything about it going out not going out it's not in our hands anymore we can't even see our family members we can't even see we can't even go out for fresh air do you remember that time it was like as if this is so new to us kailan na lang ba to matatapos you know and then that deep worry what's going to happen our irritation sometimes we don't even want to watch the news anymore kasi galit na talaga tayo kasi we can't be in this space for a long time because there's so many things coming up there's stress there's anxiety there's fear all these emotions and we just don't know how to deal with those emotions in the first place so what happens is boom anger kasi it's like too much of information suddenly when we're not used to having all sorts of emotion come at us bam 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 and so that's where a lot of people are at and it's difficult because we want to say how we really feel but we don't have the right tools and that's when we get frustrated you know ask yourself this 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 question have you seen somebody angry sha sumisi go sha but they're not making any sense and when you ask them why are you angry basta angry lang ako and it's like why why are you angry it's because we've not we as human beings we we've, we've suppressed our emotions so we cannot verbalize it and we fear judgment we fear being judged so sometimes or majority majority of the times people just suppress that anger e bali wala naman eh nothing can happen so i'll just be quiet and then you know that they're seething inside So that's the second stage. The third stage being bargaining. I'll do anything to change this. You know, struggling to find meaning. So, two months ng lockdown, I'll do anything. Trust me, I'll do anything. And also when we say grief, losing your you know losing your job losing somebody very close to you losing your graduation not being able to graduate the one thing i think as human beings is that we we don't validate our emotions we think we always think that person's you know if there has been a death in some somebody's family i'm so sorry for your loss but parang we can't we don't want to up their their feeling parang when when there has been something like a death or somebody loses their job parang it's like i can't i can't say na lang anything kasi they have it worse than me so we devalue our own emotions and we devalue ourselves and we keep quiet and we try to reach out to others so bargaining is like how about if we we do this you know try not then let's let's go out here or all these things you know like that we can come up with so that to to find meaning in what we're experiencing the fourth stage depression Now, 
this depression, the individual has come to recognize that the loss has occurred or will occur. Now, this is not mental depression. It's totally different. This is this stage is when the individual has come to recognize that there's this deep sadness because of they've isolated themselves and they've spent time crying and they've spent time grieving. Depression is a precursor to acceptance because the individual has come to recognize that this is what has happened already. So we go, this depression is more retreating when we're very overwhelmed by what has happened. When a lot of people that go through this, they can be very hostile. You know, they want to retreat. They want to be quiet. They want to um, just be by themselves because they feel there's a lot of hopelessness. You know, they ask, what's the point in all of this? What is the point? They can be sometimes hostile because there's a lot of thing going there's a lot of things going on in the mind. I'm sure you guys have heard of fight or flight. And this is when they just want to escape. They're very overwhelmed with their emotions. And the main thing is as human beings, we have a lot of sadness. We go through sadness. So that's why we go through all these emotions. But here's the thing that I want to tell you. And I want to focus on this. Wherever you're at right now, accept where you're at. Don't be in a rush to be somewhere else. Meaning, you understand that once you are in a stage of, let's say, for example, when we started, which is anxiety, you're going to pass through all that. Tapos wala ng anxiety. You can. We will always shift back and forth, back and forth, because something new will happen every day. You know, something new, something that we, we, we can't even predict anymore what's going to happen. So when that happens, we go through waves of our emotions, trying to find where we're at. But this is a good way to, to really understand so we can understand ourselves better and do something about it. Because everything is in our hands. Information is there. We're giving you the information. And hopefully you can do something about it so that we can all try to learn that keeping our anger inside and keeping our emotions will not serve us but we're going to do something about it. And when we do something about it, we help others as well. The last stage is acceptance, adapting and adjusting. This is the stage where one has accepted already. There are things that how it's happened and they've gone through their emotions, exploring the new options, the new plan, moving along, it all happens for a reason. I can't change na. Nangyari na eh. Nangyari na yung March. Nangyari na yung April. We're already in July, end of July. And in two days, it's already August. So sometimes, you know, we say, what good is it going to do? Let's just move on. I can't change what has happened in the past, but I know it's going to be okay. And this is where we want to be in the acceptance stage. But then again, I want to make sure that you guys understand that it doesn't mean when you're in the acceptance stage or adapting stage or the, adjust, uh, or the adjusting stage, you're not going to go through anxiety. Because anxiety is future. It hasn't happened. So sometimes the news, so even if we're in a state of acceptance, Sometimes the news will just come and it will cause us to have anxiety. And I want you to know that it's okay to feel that way. It is normal to feel that way. But understanding where you need to be, accepting that, you know, we need to move forward. 
in all of this and for whatever you've been through, for whatever any of you has been through, do not devalue what you've gone through. If you've lost a job, if you've lost even a vacation, if you've lost a family member, do not devalue your emotions. Every emotion is valid. We're all going through something or the other and everything, everyone, everything that we're all going through, we can't say, I, that person has it worse than me. This is not a competition. We all go through something and we need to learn to accept, take matters into our own hands. And how do we move forward? How do we move forward with loving and accepting ourselves and having compassion for ourselves? Because that's the main thing, having compassion that we're all doing a good job. We're trying our very best, but understand we've never had to hear of a lockdown or a pandemic in our lifetime, in our parents' lifetime, and maybe even our grandparents' lifetime. And this is new. So we're trying to grapple. We're trying to figure things out. And that's why we want you to focus on your mental health because what do we have if we don't have our mental health? Our mental health governs even our physical health. And that's why Maxi Care has created all these webinars, a set of series of webinars for you to give you, to, you know, it's learning. Think of it as we're all here. Even me, even as a therapist, you'd think I'm still learning a lot of things and I will forever learn. And there's no shame in how we're supposed to feel. Take away the shame. Take away all these judgments. If you're feeling something, don't be hard on yourself. Don't think them. Head up in a family. I can't I have to be strong. You know, I can't show my wife how I feel. I can't show my children how I feel. Don't do that. Take some time to yourself and breathe. Pause, breathe, and let your emotions just be. How am I feeling? This is heavy. And just understand where you're at. And there's no shame to saying that I'm depressed right now. There's no shame in saying I'm very anxious of what's going to happen. We're all anxious. Nobody wants to live this way. And you know, for you to understand that the mind does two things, two things, the mind predicts because it needs to keep you safe. So when it cannot predict, it cannot keep you safe. And that's when the mind starts to think about so many things. And that's anxiety because it cannot predict what's going to happen in the future because nobody knows what's going to happen in the future. And to have anxiety, we worry about the future. Are we still going to have a job? Is COVID going to affect us? What's going to happen? These are all valid questions. Don't think for one second that no, that I better not ask that question. If that's how you feel, get it out. Let it out. We're not supposed to be, sometimes we can't keep it in because we just need it out and then we feel better. So that's the acceptance stage. Adapting, learning to adjust. Again, you know, in the webinars that I give, the first thing I say when people say new normal, what is your normal for you? What is this normal for you? How does this make sense for you? It's not an, an, another person's idea on what normal is. What is normal for you? Maybe normal is learning to respect yourself. Maybe normal is talking about your emotions. Maybe the new normal is learning to 
focus on your mental health and your physical health and your physical well-being. Maybe that's the new normal for you. But whatever it is, don't judge yourself. And know, the most important thing is know that you're doing a hell of a job. How do I know that? You guys are here. And from what Patricia even said, a lot of you came earlier than, than scheduled. And that means you're interested. You want to learn. You want to know. You want to use the information that we're all giving you to create a better life for you. And that's something that the next slide, I swear by this. Last slide. So Benjamin Franklin said, change is the only thing constant in life. One's ability to adapt to those changes will be determine your success in life. Change is the only thing constant. We cannot think for one split second that change is every, that's the thing about us human beings. We don't like change. We associate change with being in pain and, and it being, having a lot of discomfort. But it's not. Change can be beautiful. It's just up to you how you're going to change your life. Are you going to resist? Or are you just going to say, I surrender everything. I put everything in a bag and I surrender it. And I'm going to go on doing my life. I surrender it to the universe, to God, to Jesus Christ, whoever you believe in. And I'm going to keep doing what I you know, need to do for myself but with love and compassion. And that's the change that we need because change is inevitable. It will happen to each and every soul on earth. It will because it's constant. But are you going to understand it or you're going to go against it? You're going to flow with it or you're going to go against it? The choice is yours. And your ability to adapt will determine your success in life. That's something that I believe totally. I see it. I see it every day. I see it even in my own attitude. And that's something that I wanted to share with you. So hopefully um, um, this conversation that we've had makes sense. Try to understand that you don't have to you don't have to be like, okay, so it's here. We need to be here. Understand where you're at. Understand, are you in the acceptance stage right now? Are you still in the denial stage? Work through your emotions. Don't be in a rush. Understand where you're at. Give yourself some break. Cut yourself some slack. And understand that we need we need you to understand this main thing that take it one day at a time. Don't be in a rush. Take it one day at a time. But really truthfully, it's okay to not be okay. It's okay to just say, I can't handle this. It's okay to say, I need to pause. I need to breathe. Please say that. Please say that when you really can't because you need to pause. You're not this hamster going on this site and this wheel like this. We need to pause. We need to breathe. We need to calm ourselves down. We need to get a grip on how we're feeling and how we've been feeling. And all these bottled up emotions that we've been feeling that we've suppressed, don't do that anymore. It's not going to work for you. Let it out. Let it out. I suggest, you know, journaling. Get a journal. Write down how you're feeling. Because you think you know how you're feeling, but when you journal, so much is going to come out. And when all that comes out, you're going to be shocked because you're going to say, wow, I didn't know I was feeling that way. And that's how we need to be. That's how we're going to learn. That's going to be the new normal, that we're going to focus on our health. We're going to focus on our mind health. We're going to focus on loving ourselves. Because that's what life is. Life is beautiful. Life is hard, but life is beautiful. And it's up to us how we're going to adapt to the changes that's being thrown at us. And hopefully, we all do it together. 
while we're here at MaxiCare holding the space for you through the series of webinars. So thank you for, for, for joining us. And um, now I think I'm ready to answer all your questions. Wow, that was an amazing talk by Ms. Staffs. Thanks so much. I, I certainly learned so much and I have so many questions running through my head and I'm, I'm sure our attendees do too. Thank you so much. This is now the time for all of you to ask your questions using the Q&A button at the bottom of your Zoom screen. And if your questions here are not addressed, not answered, you may send an email to maxicarewebinar at maxicare.com.ph and our speaker will respond to your questions after the event. For now, allow me to call on someone who will facilitate this Q&A. Now, ladies and gentlemen, our facilitator for today's webinar is a trained and certified psychiatrist whose expertise will be instrumental in facilitating an open and fruitful discussion with our speaker. Please welcome from MaxiCare, Dr. Joyce Maglake. Hi, Dr. Joyce. Hello and good morning to all of you. So thank you so much, Ms. Saps Utam, for this very wonderful uh, and fruitful discussion. Um, and I think personally, what I really resonated with um, listening to it is when you said that uh, grief is not just losing a person, but losing one's own identity and losing freedom, which is actually, I think that's a shared experience for all of us um, throughout this pandemic. Right? And you mentioned yourself um, going through some anxiety. So we actually have a lot of questions um, for you today. Um, but I think if it's okay with you uh, for us to start already? Sure. All right, great. So um, because a while ago, uh, as what I mentioned, the shared experience aspect of it, um, you mentioned that you've, been, that you've also gone through some anxiety. So one of our questions actually was, um, from, from one of our audience members is that among the five stages, which do you think is the most difficult um, one to go through? And if ever, as a follow-up, is there a specific time on how long you, you should be in a certain stage? You know, I think if you ask me, every step can be difficult because you know, we kick and scream when there is an emotion. You know, denial can be difficult, but it quickly goes to anger. Bargaining, that's, I think, fast because, you know, we, we ask the questions and then we go deep into where we need to go next. But if you ask me, I think anger. Mm -hmm. I would say anger. I'm going to ask you also, uh, for your, for, for your answer. Where? I think <laughs> anger because... As human beings, you know, one thing, and you know, you're a psychiatrist, I deal a lot with psychology, right? So we're right. both basically from the same field. Yeah. I think a lot of people, every single human being goes through anger. Every person, even the, the most quiet person, they have seething anger or they had it. And I think anger goes hand in hand with a lot of denial as well. That's right. Because they don't admit that they're angry. So I think the sticky one is always anger because it's like, no, I'm not angry. I'm just frustrated. No, I'm not angry. I, this is what I'm feeling. And then, like I said a while ago, they're angry. People are angry, but then they're not really expressing it. It's like, why are you angry? And it's like, bzz, 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 all these noise. Mm, that's right. And it's like, bzz, 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 and it's like, okay, as a therapist, I, we, both of us have to catch what you're saying. And normally for me in my practice, every human being has deep seated anger and it's always patong patong already, you know, starts from very young and it's like next and then next and then next until the person explodes. Now, it's scary when they implode. Mm -hmm. And what do you see nowadays? People are actually imploding because they have nobody to talk to. Do you see that, Dr. Joyce? Yeah, definitely. <laughs> right? And that's where I feel personally. I would say all, but anger is really something that um, when it's too much and then we see people really explode and it's not healthy. 
nor is imploding healthy. Both are not healthy. You know, that's why journaling is important. But, you know, um, talking to somebody, talking to, um, we're not saying talking to a therapist, go to a therapist. If, if you can, great. If you can't, then, you know, talking to somebody like a loved one without any judgment. And as human beings, the problem with us is we judge. So let's keep our judgment outside the door. And let's really listen to what the person is saying. Because when we have that kind of an environment, then we're encouraging people to release their emotions in a safe place, safe, safe space. And you know what, when that person does that, that person can, you know, pay it forward and listen to another person as well. What do you think? Yeah, actually, I have to agree with you, especially when you mentioned that there's a lot of denial with the anger, because I've also noticed that sometimes when we express our anger, we don't really know where it's coming from, maybe because mm -hmm. there's a lot of denial there, right? So mm -hmm. um, I guess in relation, because there are also a lot of questions here asking if there's like a specific time period for every stage. Mm -hmm. uh, what's your opinion about that? No, I say don't even look at, you know, don't even think that, oh, we have to be done in one hour <laughs> or we have to be done in a week. No, right. you, it, you just, there's no steadfast rule for all these things. The most important thing is that you let it out. Um, I don't think shouting um, is good. I think really, I, I, I've noticed, you know, a lot of people when they shout, they scream, they scream, they scream. At the end, they cry. Have you seen that? Have you heard that? And yeah. they cry. So what is it? It's deep, that deep, deep, deep. Because nobody wants to be angry. Nobody wants to go around screaming at anybody. That's not who we are. But then again, when we're angry, it's because we, we feel some sort of violation. We feel violated. We feel, um, you know, um, somehow our, somebody hurt us not realizing in all of this, Dr. Joyce, we're hurting ourselves. That's right. Mm -hmm. So, next question. <laughs> uh, a, lot of, a lot of people are, are asking about um, the stages. And primarily, um, I guess because of the restrictions with our, you know, our mobility right now, a lot of people are yes. actually living alone. So mm -hmm. they're asking, like, how can, what would be a best way to go through all of the stages, especially if you're alone and you're working long hours because you're working from home alone? I think, I think this is really um, a great question. Whoever asked that, thank you so much. Um, like I said, all questions are so valid. We will try to get to, um, to you and all your questions. But if you're living alone, you know, you really have to make time for yourself and make time for those calls, conversations with your parents or, you know, your family member, um, journal, do things for yourself. I know it's hard. I know it's hard. I, I never said it was easy, but we can social distance. But remember, as human beings, we need, we need to feel loved. And we need to be nurtured and we need to, you know, a hug. We need that. That's who we are as human beings. And if you can't get that, then maybe you can schedule a Zoom with your friends. Mm -hmm. You know, you can, you can, um, you can uh, journal, see how you're feeling, put it all, jot it down. And you yourself will be the best gauge mm -hmm. on where you're going and how you're feeling. Are you moving forward or don't worry about moving backwards sometimes because that's really the way life is supposed to be. Nobody ever said that it has to be one after the other. We go back and forth and it is okay. But social distancing, it means actually physical. Like we can't really be too close to each other, but our emotions should not be distant from each other. You know, schedule a Skype call, schedule a, a FaceTime and make sure that you talk to somebody with how you're feeling, mm -hmm. you know? Yeah. So it's really very important for us to, you know, I think that's, I'm not sure if you also noticed this, but I think with our changing times right now, it's like um, time for 
ourselves and caring for ourselves is like a luxury instead of it being a necessity or like, you know, we, we really commit to it. A lot of us are just doing work all the time. Yes, exactly. Yeah, right? But we have to have that balance as well. You know, exactly. your health should be balanced. Your mind health should be balanced and physical activity should be balanced. Create balance in your life. Mm-hmm. Find a way to balance everything out. Mm-hmm. So balance is very important. And I think that's related to um, actually a lot of questions are asking, uh, like what are the tips for them to actually be able to establish uh, this balance, especially since um, they're also still keeping up with the demands and the rigors of life, like working or family, family concerns. Uh, or do you have any tips on how they can uh, achieve this balance? For me, I would say the first thing is lay off social media. <laughs> mm-hmm. okay. I would be like, just allow yourself maybe an hour, um, spend more time with your family. This is the time to really be with your family. Work, work. Um, imagine that you know, you're not at home. Imagine you're in the office. Mm-hmm. Focus your time on your work. And then when you're done, you know, store your laptop away and just connect. We need connection. Like I said, we thrive on connection. So create that perfect balance. I cannot sit here and say what um, works well, but create that balance where you feel your emotional needs are met, your um, physical needs are met, and you yourself can work on your spiritual needs. Never forget your spiritual needs. That's what we need as human beings. So, you know, make time for your prayers, make time for meditation, if that's what you're into. Even a quick prayer to God of thanks, you know, I mean, that's, that shouldn't be scheduled, Dr. Joyce. That should yeah. come from deep within, right? We wake up, we pray, we give thanks for everything that we have, our, our health, our work, our family. We constantly, if thank you is the only prayer that you say, I mean, that's such a great way to start. It is. Um, uh, it's a good mindset to start the day as well, right? Yes. Positivity. And, and, that's right. And I think the... I think the difficulty of some people, though, is being able to kind of, like, affirm their mm-hmm. own um, feelings. Because, like mm-hmm. what you said, uh, uh, you've all also gone through, of course, the initial shock when there was a lot yeah. of lockdown. I as well, you know. <laughs> there's yeah, always this denial. So, for, for, so, we understand, like, it's okay to feel these things. But I think, um, well, maybe, like, we have five questions here that are asking... <laughs> How do you actually really affirm these feelings? Um, some people are saying that their coping is internalizing, but mm-hmm. right now they feel like they're also going to explode. So how, how, how can we kind of like um, affirm ourselves that it's okay to not be okay? Uh, that's, that's been my tagline since March. Yeah. You know what? Um, I think, um, you know, placing your hand on your heart, this is really what I do. I do EFT placing your hand in your heart, closing your eyes, taking deep breaths and saying, even though I'm feeling whatever it is that you're feeling, put the negative first, affirm that that's what you're feeling. Do not hide from whatever it is that you're feeling. If you're feeling um, angry, do not say that you're not angry because you are angry. So affirm that you're angry. Even though I'm feeling angry, I'm feeling sad. I'm feeling disgusted. I'm feeling whatever it is that you're feeling. Take a deep breath and just breathe it out. Keep breathing in and breathing out. You're sending oxygen to the brain to calm yourself down. After that, switch it, switch the flip, uh, switch the script to positivity. You need to affirm that it really, it is true. You cannot change something that you're not oblivious to. Remember that. You can change something that you're denying. If you want to change this mindset of yours, you have to admit that you've been feeling that way for a long time. You've been feeling angry. You've been feeling sad. You've been feeling depressed. You've been feeling all these emotions. Affirm it. There's nothing wrong with it. The problem is, I think you're judging yourself for feeling that way, which should stop. In order for you to be positive, deal with all these feelings first. Affirm that that's what you're feeling. And then slowly go into, but I choose, I choose to heal and integrate all these parts of me. I choose to let go of this anger that I'm feeling. I choose to let go of all this resentment that I'm feeling. Start from there. Affirm first. Because, again, you cannot change what you're not oblivious to. Hmm. Does it make sense? It really does. And I think that's also what 
um, maybe a lot of our l- listeners are um, asking, you know, that, uh, it seems like, um, of course, pre-COVID, we all have our mm. typical way of coping. So some of us would probably go out to de-stress and stuff like that. But um, I guess what SAPS is also highlighting is that intrinsic in all of us, once we go through the stages, is that we, would, we also have the ability to learn and to be resilient. Okay. That's an intrinsic ability in all of us. So part of the denial and the acceptance is also accepting that maybe we would need uh, to utilize new coping mechanisms. So if before we go out, if before we internalize everything, maybe right now it's time for us to also grow and venture to like new mechanisms since these are the things that we would be carrying with us even until this pandemic will end. Uh, is that right? <laughs> yes. And one thing I want to highlight, that was um, um, awesome. Thank you. One thing I want to highlight, you guys, everyone listening, you, I think, People have forgotten how resilient they are. And, you know, I've said this before, and I will always say this again. Yes, I am foreign. <laughs> I look foreign. But I am Filipino by blood. I mean, by, by, by heart. I was born here. But you understand how resilient we are, that we help. You know, the Bayanihan spirit? That's how resilient Filipinos are. Yeah. We help. We, we just give. And I, I wish, my wish really is that you give a little bit towards yourself as well. Don't ever forget yourself. Because when we are exhausted and we're spent, it means that you have forgotten about yourself. And know that we are resilient. We have it in us. But you have just forgotten about yourself. And that's where we struggle. And we get really tired and we get spent and we get angry because we've given too much of ourselves outside but we don't give inward. And that's where we need to, um, that's why the steps are important. Um, See where you're at. And you need to give to yourself. Constantly give to yourself. Love yourself. Make sure that that cup of yours is getting filled up by only you. You're the only person that can do this. I think uh, what you mentioned, um, the judgment, a lot of us, even looking at the questions, it seems like there's really this dissonance with the feelings of anger. But uh, like with the stages, anger is really part of it, right? Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. So, of course. Mm-hmm. I mean, any person would feel angry for being locked in. Anyone. Anyone, obviously, like anger and it's like, uh, I mean, it's the grief of your freedom. We've lost our freedom. And to lose something, like I said, no pain is ever small enough or ever big enough. Pain is pain. And because as human beings, we're very stuck in a particular pain, you know, a particular pain that this is all new to us and we resist it because we don't know what it is and we don't want to deal with it. So we are resisting. And you know, this is, the, this is the one thing I tell a lot of my clients. You know, like when uh, there are waves, so the waves are like this. If you guys can see me, the waves are like this. And when you go against the wave, that's when, bam, you fall. And, you know, it's uh, not ideal. So we have to go through the way life is. Yeah. Like I said, life is difficult. Yeah, nothing is supposed to be easy. Life is difficult. It can be easy, but it's up to you to decide on how it's going to be. But understand that you are love. That's your DNA. You are love. You have every bit of love in you. So go inward, love yourself, take care of yourself, nurture yourself, have compassion for yourself because you are doing the very best that you can. Yeah. Um, I guess... I totally resonate with that. Actually, I was I wanted to say, but there are a lot of questions. What I wanted to say that you're taking EFT. Actually, I'm studying EFT right now, so I'm like, yay! Oh, <laughs> <laughs> yeah, guys, um, because there's no time. Although you know, between the both of us, we can sit here and talk forever. Yeah, um, guys, just Google EFT. It will really help you. Get on YouTube. It's free. Look for E Emotional F Freedom T Technique. And see where you're at, you know, and try to do it because what we really want is for you 
to get that emotion out. You know, get it out, get it out, get it out there. And then see how you feel and take it one day at a time. You know, today you're going to feel like better. See how you feel. Did I feel better today? Did I release that? Go to sleep next day. Always ascertain and ask yourself these questions because you're the only one that can really address the situation. And know that we're always here for you. You know, Maxi Care is always here for you. Wow. <laughs> to help you live your best life. And, yes. Uh, and, you know, um, I think uh, like what you mentioned that uh, we have to leave some for ourselves. Compassion, really. And uh, one of the questions here, actually, which I think is um, important to also talk about is that sure. uh, if you're already in a state of like um, depression or anxiety, so sometimes that self-compassion can be difficult. So um, can you suggest ways on how they can, uh, you know, nourish themselves with compassion? Okay. I think um, it will speak mostly to depression. You know that. Um, take it one day at a time. Learn to really love yourself for everything that you're going through. Um, that deep sadness that you're feeling, um, whatever it is that you're feeling, you know, you're the one judging yourself. You're the one putting names on yourself. You're the one really, like, stop stop doing that you know stop don't identify with whatever the mind is telling you you know ask yourself this is where we're at the mind and the heart needs to be that perfect balance when the mind controls and the mind will because that's what it does best the mind will control and then that's when we have all these thoughts running in our mind Again, love does not exist without compassion. Compassion does not exist without love. Love yourself, even for being down and out, even for having all these thoughts. Still love yourself because, I mean, you are a beautiful soul. You are, oh my God, we are all beautiful children of God. I mean, I am a spiritual therapist, so I will go there. I think this is where... Whoever you are asking this question, I think your faith, strengthen that faith some more. Surrender for people going through something or even not going through anything. Put all your worries, fears, everything in a bag. Seal it up. Let it rise into the sky. Even your happy thoughts, your worries, everything. Seal it up. Let the universe take care of it. And you attend to you. Again, as I said, again, as I said, anxiety, you cannot cure anxiety because anxiety is future-based. Depression is the past. So my point is when you have a lot of anxious thoughts, ask yourself, hey, hey, where is this stemming from? Hey, Calm down. Center yourself. Align yourself. Come back to the middle. So there is this. We have depression, we have stress, and we have anxiety. Stress is the now. Anxiety is the future. Ask yourself. Bring yourself back. Where is this stemming from? Is it true? Ask yourself the question. Is it true? Tamaba. Or because the mind is, an op is quite opportunistic, it's going to take you two years down the line. It hasn't even happened. We're still here. So bring yourself back. Ask yourself that question. The best thing I think, the best advice I can give other than really having faith and surrendering in God or the universe, Jesus Christ, Mother Mary, whoever you want to believe in, as long as you believe in somebody. And really having self-talk. Self-talk. Is it, where is this stemming from? Let that fear come out. And what is fear, Dr. Joyce? False evidence appearing real. It's false evidence appearing real. To get you to do two things, remember? To predict and to keep you safe. Yeah. That's it. Yeah. You're actually, that's um, personally, that's also, I think that's the good thing about our practice, whether it's psychiatry or um, psychology therapy. It's all about like uh, holistic, it, we always look at things holistically, you know, 
uh, biopsychosocial. Yeah. So like, for example, anxiety or fear, these are um, reactions of our body. But sometimes we tend to be aversive towards it, you know, like, oh, I don't want to feel these things. And I think a lot of people are talking about like suppressing, but I think mm. um, with the discussion also of SAPS, it's not really about suppressing your emotions, but it's also about being compassionate that you're feeling this way. Because technically, mm. who wouldn't feel, who would be A-OK with all of the pandemic <laughs> that's happening? I would love to I meet a person know. that is like 100% OK. <laughs> but then again, remember what, uh, what um, change is inevitable. Right. Change is really inevitable. It is. It's the only thing that is permanent. And Exactly. Right? That's why I love that quote also. I've used that, to be honest, I've used it as well. <laughs> so you and I agree, you see? I, change I, is I, constant. It don't is. defy change, you know? Don't defy change. But now that you know, make better choices and make a better change for yourself. That's why, like, what is the new normal for you? Maybe the new normal, you're suddenly going to start meditating, you know? Suddenly, you're going to start... Um, tinkering and playing with uh, your food intake. You know, I always bring food in because I am a nutritionist. So it's always like bringing in more fruits and vegetables. Little do you know that fruits and vegetables can actually calm the mind down. It can calm the body down, you know, but we don't have the time for that, unfortunately. Otherwise, we can go in and, and really, really delve on it. But yeah. You know, just take it one day at a time. Um, it's okay to not be okay. Pause, breathe, just breathe and pause. And if things are not going well, just bring your attention back to the center. Mm -hmm. Breathe, close your eyes and just breathe. Forget everything that you're doing. And then, you know, I'll give you a tip. So yes. place your hand here and then here, guys. So. Oh, okay. Five times. You need more, do more. Do Center more. everything back. Because what that means is you are forgetting to breathe. And breath is prana. Prana is life. That's and right. so you want to bring back breath. You want to, you want to, you know, get a handle on life. Because you can do it. We are resilient people. We can do it. That should be our mantra. And living your best life, right? Yeah. Definitely. And um, breathing, it also reminds us that we're all present right now mm. in the present. Because most of the time, like what Sap said, we're either in the past or too much in the future. But we forgot, we forget our right now. Um, actually, I think we have, um, we have a lot of questions. But I do want to say some comments as well. No? Um, like a lot of people are saying that uh, they really enjoyed your talk. It's very helpful. And they agree you. about, you know, um, practicing good, um, uh, a, a good self-talk with yourself. Um, this one is interesting, though. Uh, we have three questions that are asking, how can you apply or teach your children these five steps of coping? <laughs> Just well, to qualify, one of the ones who, who ask has a six-year-old. So how do they teach the children? I'm going to tell you something. Children don't listen to what you say. Children follow what you do. So you can say a lot of things. They're not going to listen to you. But if you center yourself and if you ground yourself and you get some sort of practice for yourself, like even meditation and all that, they will follow you. Because children are they're really resilient, but they don't listen to what you say. But right. they follow you. You know the saying, oh my God, I've turned into our mother. Like, you know, like when you're talking to your sister a few years down the line, you're like, oh my God, I've turned into my mother. I've turned into my father. Why? Because you've picked it up. Children pick up things, you know, but they don't really listen. But it's just, that's the way they are. They don't listen to what you're saying. So if you're going to have a good practice for yourself, understand and the kids see it all the time and they see you're more calm they will want to practice something or the other and they will be open to learning because they see that it's kind of worked for you right 
um, unfortunately, we have to wrap up, but I have so many <laughs> things that I'm sure all of you also have a lot of questions. For some of the questions, um, um, we'll be forwarding them, so uh, don't worry. Uh, SAPS would still be able to give you some insights. Uh, and um, thank you very much uh, to all of you, I guess, for uh, listening to us. And thank you so much, SAPS. Um, true, it's it's really personally. I really love hearing uh, a kindred spirit. You know, especially with these times, we always talk about self compassion. Um, it's very difficult for us to really like. Um, deal with life or look forward to it if we also don't find that in ourselves. So just like what Sap said, we are all beautiful creatures. We have the faculties inside us to actually be resilient and survive all of these challenges that life is throwing at us. But we have to harness that patience and that trust within ourselves. So thank you so much, Sap. Thank you. Thank you, Dr. Joyce. Thank you. Thank you to each and every one of you. You don't understand how happy we are. And um, we promise that we're going to, you know, have more of these things for you. And thank you for all your questions. I'll try to answer as much as I can. And I just wish you nothing but the best. And God bless. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you so much, Dr. Joyce, for facilitating the all-important interaction with our attendees via the Q&A. Now, I'm going to ask the attendees to stay just for a couple of more minutes. Your questions do matter to us, and Dr. Joyce mentioned it. If your questions were not answered here, you may send an email to maxicarewebinar at maxicare.com.ph, and our speaker will respond to your questions after this event. And on that note, thanks so much, Ms. Saps Utam, who shared with us her expertise and knowledge on how we can all cope better during this present time. I certainly have a lot more clarity now. Now, before you go, here are two quick poll questions. Before you go, just click on the answer that best suits you, okay? Question number one, sa ating poll dito, do you want to live your best life? Dalawa lang naman ang options dyan, eh. Yes, of course, or oo, syempre. I know that you're all here because you do want to live your best life. And it's going to be a resounding, what kaya? Yes or oo? Oh, oh. A resounding yes. Thank you so much to everyone for sharing that. I have two more poll questions. Here's the second one. Would you like to attend another session on mental health, well-being? Yes, please. Or I would like to attend talks on another topic. Ano yung gusto nyo? Let's take a look at the poll results and people are seeing yes. This is so important for 90% of you. You really want to attend another MaxiCare webinar on mental health. Thank you so much for letting us know. I have one more question though. Which topics would you like to see on our next webinars? Meron din tayong physical health option, healthy nutrition recipes, personal finance tips, maganda yan, work from home tips, COVID-19 pandemic situation, and prevention advice. Please let us know right now. Answer the poll question. I love this, this uh, poll ability for Zoom so we can immediately check on what you guys are saying. All right, can I see the results, please? Kung ano yung pinupusuan ng mga tao. Actually, lahat yan. You're very interested to hear all these topics. But work from home tips uh, is not necessarily resounding. But 45% of you uh, got to say that work from home tips is important. Kasunod na COVID-related uh, discussions, sa situation na yan and how to cope. And then also equally important yung mga personal finance tips. We hear all of you. Thank you so much for all of your interaction. Now, just a reminder, we will send out a survey form after this event and we will be giving away raffle prizes to those who complete the survey. Pagpipilian natin yung mga nakakompleto and MaxiCare will be sending uh, those who were selected gifts. Now, if you enjoyed this experience, please do share on your social media using the hashtag MaxiCare MaxiLife webinar and the hashtag live your best life. And you can tag MaxiCare on Facebook sa MaxiCare Healthcare Corp and on Instagram at MaxiCare Healthcare when sharing about your wonderful learnings here. Well, this ends our event for today. We hope you enjoyed and you were able to take away meaningful information that will help you, your loved ones, your coworkers, and everyone around you cope during these trying times. 
with this Maxi Life, Maxi Care Wellbeing webinar series. I'm Patricia bermudez on. Thanks again. Have a great day, and we all hope that you can live your best life. Si Mama, unlimited ang pagmamahal. Kaya unlimited din ang pasasalamat ko sa kanya. It's time to give back with MaxiCare Prima Gold, the affordable prepaid health card for senior citizens. Kanina pa masama yung pakiramdam ko? <coughs> Obo. Sipon. Masakit ang ulo. May lagnat na rin yata ako. Sa tingin ko, hindi ko na kaya pumunta sa ospital. Dok, anong gagawin ko? First of all, you really need to rest. Kailan nagsimula ang pananakit ng ulo at pag-ubo mo? Kapon pa po ng umaga, Dok. Na-check mo na ba temperature mo? Care is just a call away. With MaxiCare's 24-7 teleconsult service, every MaxiCare principal member and their dependent gets free expert medical consultation from reliable MaxiCare partner doctors anywhere at any time. Sa MaxiCare 24-7 Teleconsult Service, ang alaga parang nariyan lang. MaxiCare. Pag naaksidente, sagot ka ng e-ready. Ang first prepaid emergency health card from MaxiCare. Sagot ng sakit ng katawan, sagot din ng sakit sa bulsa. Pag emergency, sagot ka ng MaxiCare e-ready.